As you watch this teaching, please subscribe, like, and comment so more people can see. My name is Rick Renner, and today I'm coming to you from the Gatchina Palace, just outside of St. Petersburg, Russia. At one time, this palace was the seat for the imperial family in Russia. But during World War II, this palace was decimated. The enemy came and literally pillaged this place, bombed this place, burned it, and left it in a shambles. But the restorers came. And after the war, they went to work. And you can see just a slither of restoration where I'm seated right now. But if you look beyond this slither, you'll see the rest of the room is still quite a mess. But it makes me think of what Jesus said in John 10.10. He said, the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That's what the Nazi troops did to this building. They stole its treasures. So much destruction was in this place. They literally tried to destroy it. But Jesus continued to say in John 10, 10, I'm come that you might have life and have it more abundant. Just like this little slither has been restored and is beautiful because the restorer's hands were here. When we let the Lord work in our life, it doesn't matter how much destruction we've had, anything we'll let Him touch, He'll bring abundant life to it. He'll bring restoration to it. And that is what I'm going to talk to you about today. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. Hey, my name is Rick Renner, and my friend, I've been waiting for you. I hope you've been waiting for me. Don't change the channel, because today we're going to find out that Jesus can restore you from any kind of abuse you ever received in your past. And I'm teaching a brand new series called You Are God's Restoration Project. You ought to say, amen. That's what I am. I'm God's Restoration Project project. The subtitle says, How God Restores the Desolate Places in Your Life. And if you have any area of your life that you feel has fallen into a shambles or has become desolate, that's the place where Jesus wants to put His hands because you are God's restoration project. And like I told you yesterday, when Jesus was living, He was called a carpenter. That's before he began his ministry. The word carpenter is such a sad translation of the Greek word tecton. The word tecton is the word that is used in the four gospels that's normally translated, unfortunately, carpenter. The reason it's unfortunate is because Jesus probably didn't work with wood at all. The word tecton, translated carpenter, describes a person that makes exquisite furniture, a person that makes fabulous jewelry, a person that can paint frescoes on the wall, a person who designs and composes mosaics, and particularly a person who can make shiny things, shiny things. And even more importantly, that word tecton could even describe a person who had the literary skills to write a masterpiece, a masterpiece. And if you just wanted one word to translate the word tecton, a better translation would be, not carpenter, but he was the great artisan. And that's who Jesus still is. He is an artisan. And Jesus loves to take things that have fallen into shambles or have become desolate. But when he puts his hands on them, he releases his divine power, recreates them, and they begin to shine better than they ever previously shined. And I'm going to show you that today in Ephesians chapter 2, by the way, reads for your Bible and a piece of paper and get something to write with because today you really are going to want to take notes. But please order this series called You Are God's Restoration Project and it comes with a study guide. And this week we're offering you a whole package of Denise's books, including The Gift of Forgiveness. That's a powerful book about what happens when you receive forgiveness or give it to somebody else. We're offering Denise's book called, Do You Know What Time It Is? This entire book is about how you can redeem lost time and lost opportunities. And we're offering you Denise's book called, Redeemed from Shame, 
where she shares her testimony about how God set her free from shame. When you look at Denise, she's so pretty and she's lived such a godly life. You think, what in the world did she ever have reason to feel shame about? Well, she felt shame and many people do, but she was set free. And how she was set free from shame is in this book. And we're also offering you her book that I've read four times called Who Stole Cinderella? The Art of Happily Ever After. It's about how to be a godly wife and a happy wife. And I want to remind you that when you become a partner with our ministry, we're going to send you two books as our way of saying welcome to our partner family. And a partner is anyone who regularly financially supports our ministry. We're going to send you my book called Life in the Combat Zone. And we will also send you Denise's book, The Gift of Forgiveness. And if you need prayer, please let us know how to pray for you. Call us right now or send us your email. And the moment we hear from you, we're going to release our faith for God to do something marvelous in your life. And He will that reads for your Bible. And today I want you to open your Bible to Ephesians chapter 2. Everyone has a story about their past. But when you understand what Ephesians chapter 2 says, it really means we were all abused in some way before Jesus laid His hands on us. So if you feel like you've had abuse in your past, don't feel lonely. Everyone has a story. But when you come to Ephesians chapter 2, listen to what the Apostle Paul says about all of us before Jesus touched us. And in Ephesians 2, verse 2, Paul remarkably writes, Wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. That is a powerful, powerful verse, but because it is the King James Version, sometimes people don't understand what is written here. So today I want us to take this verse apart and understand every significant phrase in it. And notice how he begins in verse 2. Please write this down if you're taking notes. He says, wherein in time past. The Greek says, in ice pote, and it literally means back then. It's the equivalent of Paul reaching into his pocket and pulling out a picture of who you used to be. My daddy used to do this. My daddy, when he got older, carried a favorite photo of himself from his younger years. He'd pull it out and he'd say, look at me back then. That's what this is. When it says, wherein in time past, Paul is reminding us what we looked like, who we were before Jesus touched our lives. And it literally means back Then, back in those days, he says you walked according to the course of this world. According to in Greek is the word kata. And in this particular place, it carries the idea of a downward force, something that is dominating, subjugating, or something that is so powerful it is conquering you to such an extent that now it is completely controlling you and manipulating you. And Paul says before Christ touched us, Back in those earlier days, we were being dominated by, subjugated by, and controlled by what? The course of this world. Well, the course of this world is kind of an unfortunate translation. The word course in Greek is actually the Greek word cosmos. The word cosmos describes anything that is ordered or anything that is arranged And in fact, it even is the word that was used at this particular time when Paul was writing to describe society. It could describe fashion. It could describe sophistication. And Paul says, before people come to Christ, back in the old time, when they're unsaved, they are dominated by, they're conquered by, they're subjugated by, and controlled by the world around them, using the Greek word cosmos, because they have no eternal perspective, and they don't live by the Word of God. They are controlled by society around them. The whim of the age, the whim of the times, whatever society is saying and dictating at that particular moment. And really, this is so unfortunate because society is all the time changing its mind. So unbelievers live by a fluctuating standard. But then he goes on to say, according to the course of this world, and the word world is the Greek word ionos, and the word ionos is really the word for an age, an age with a concrete beginning and a concrete ending, a measurable and limited period of time like a century or like a decade or like a generation. 
And Paul, again, is telling us people that are unsaved are simply dominated by the world around them, by the decade that they're living in in that moment, or the thinking of the current times. But it's fluctuating all the time. Thank God as believers, we have a standard that never changes. The Word of God is an anchor for our lives, but unbelievers do not have that. And then he says in verse 2, wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. The words according to are again in Greek, the word kata, which describes a downward force, something that is dominating, subjugating, subjugating to such an extent that it is manipulating and it is controlling you. And now Paul tells us unbelievers walk around completely dominated by society, by the fashions, by the trends, not knowing that working behind the scenes, there is a spiritual force that is dominating society and working through society. And who is that exterior force? He says the prince of the power of the air. But let's just focus on the words, the prince. In Greek, it has a definite article. So this is not just any prince, this is the prince. And here, the Apostle Paul is describing Satan. The word archon is actually the earlier form of this word. The word archon has the definite article. It describes the prince, the ruler, the preeminent authority figure, the one with influence and jurisdiction in one particular realm. And the Bible says he is the prince of the power of the air. And what we find is Satan works through world systems. This is why when you read 2 Corinthians chapter 4, the Apostle Paul calls him the God of this world. The word world there does not mean the planet. It doesn't describe nature. It describes world systems. Satan works through the courts. Satan loves to work through education. Satan loves to work through religious spheres. Satan loves to work through entertainment, through the media, through the press through Hollywood. He works through world systems. That is his jurisdiction. And that is what the Apostle Paul now says in this verse. And he says, it is the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. The word worketh is a form of the Greek word energeu. It describes a power that energizes or activates. It depicts a powerful force that is set into motion. It is active power, or hence, it is an energizing power or an energizing presence. And in this verse, indeed, it signifies an energizing presence, which means Satan is the energizing presence of society and of all the world systems. And he's working in, he is energizing, whom Paul calls the children of disobedience. What does that mean, disobedience? It is a Greek word, apatheia from the word patho, which means to be persuadable or to be convincible. But if you put an A on the front of it, it comes to describe one that is uncontrollable, unleadable, belligerent, non-compliant, or obstinate, one that you are no longer able to persuade, control, lead, or to exercise authority over. And here we find the devil's ultimate aim is to create a world that runs amok of authority, casts off authority. It is obstinate, particularly in regard to the Word of God and the commands of God. Children of disobedient. It describes a lost world. And my friends, that's who we all were before We got saved. And that is why in verse 3, Paul says, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past. Now, somebody usually always says, well, I was never that bad. Yes, you were. You just didn't know how bad you were. You were unsaved. You were born in sin. You had the nature of sin. You had the potential to be as bad as anybody can be. Maybe you didn't reach the potential, but you had that potential because you had the nature of sin controlling your life. And according to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2, it was the spirit of the enemy himself who was energizing you and driving and moving your life. No wonder you experienced abuse in your past. Look who was running the show in your life. And if you think you have a story to tell, most people do. Most people were abused by somebody or they did something wrong that 
resulted in abuse in their life? Oh, everyone has a story. That's because before you come to Christ, it is the enemy himself who's running the show. You're being actively energized by the spirit that works in the children of disobedience. In fact, the Bible says you are a slave to sin. And as a slave to sin, the enemy was selling you into all kinds of sin, all kinds of abuse, all kinds of bondage. That's what he did with you before Jesus laid his hands on you and changed everything. And now when you come to verse 3, Paul says, among whom we all had our conversation in times past. It's the equivalent of saying we were all at once a part of that same gang. And in fact, the word conversation, the Greek word anastrophe, it describes one's going in, they're coming out, they're rising up, they're going down. It pictures their total lifestyle. He said, this is how we were all living before Christ touched us in times past past, this is who we were. And in times past is the Greek word pote. It means at that time, at that previous time, or back then. He's reminding us of where we have all come from. But then when you come to Ephesians 2 verse 4, this wonderful verse, he says, but God, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he hath loved us. First of all, he uses the word but, which in Greek is the word day. The word day is used as an emphatic marker to emphasize a very important point. It's almost like Paul is lifting his voice, but, 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 hear me, hear me, hear me. God who is rich. We could just stop right there. This word rich is the word plusias. My friends, God is rich. And this word rich, the Greek word plusias, describes wealth so great it cannot be tabulated. Abundant wealth, vast wealth, extreme riches, incredible abundance, magnificent opulence, extravagant lavishness. But according to verse 4, God is particularly rich when it comes to mercy. But God who is rich in mercy. And the word mercy is the Greek word eleos. It can be described as pity or as compassion. The pity doesn't change anything. This is a compassion that is moved to action. Real mercy doesn't just look at something and say, oh, that's so sad. Mercy says, I'm going to do something to change that. And we find that when God saw us in our condition, when we were unsaved, his mercy swung into action. And when it comes to mercy, God is plusias. He is vastly wealthy, which means when it comes to the subject of mercy, God is filthy, stinking, rich. He will never run out of mercy. And his mercy caused him to swing into action to change our condition and to bring us out of that mess and out of all of that abuse. And in fact, it goes on to say in verse 4, for his great love wherewith he loved us. You say, well, how much does he love us? Well, the word great is the word polus. It depicts something so great that it is incalculable. He has an incalculable love for me and for you and for your family. And in verse 5, it says, Even when we were dead in sins, God hath quickened us together by grace. Are you saved? The word dead is the Greek word nekros, which is the very same Greek word for a corpse. A corpse is dead. A corpse has no heartbeat. It has no pulse. It has no breath in its lungs. It has no desires. Can't make a decision because it is necros. It is dead. It is a corpse, which means when you and I were lost in sin and we're not even thinking about God, when we were dead in sin, God's mercy swung into action and God seized us and quickened us together with Christ. And that is why Paul adds in parentheses, by grace are you saved, had nothing to do with us. All we had to do was say yes to the Lordship of Jesus, and God did everything else. That is amazing. But then when you come to Ephesians 2, verse 10, we find what God did with me and what he did with you. Listen to this. For we, we, that's me and you, we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. Well, what does the word workmanship mean? The word workmanship in Greek is the word poema. It's a very familiar word. It describes a poem. It's where you get the word for a poem. It could describe a product that has been produced, a thing made. 
Here it is translated as the word workmanship, but the word poema, which here is translated workmanship, really is the word for a masterpiece. It can be a masterpiece of art. It can be a literary masterpiece. It describes something that one has put all of his genius and all of his creative powers into. It is something that's been artfully created. It describes one who has the ability to write or to create a literary masterpiece. And this word explains what happened to us the day we said yes to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. On that day, God put forth all of his brilliance, all of his most powerful creative efforts to make us new. And when God was finished with his work in our life in salvation, my friends, you and me, we became God's masterpiece, skillfully and artfully created in Christ Jesus. And the word created in this verse is also very important because it is the Greek word ketidzo. You say, well, what does ketidzo mean? Well, this Greek word ketidzo means the creation of something from nothing. The creation of something from nothing. Not renewed, not refashioned, not remade with old materials, but something that is brand spanking new, never existing before. This is not a product that has been enhanced, improved, repaired, or restored. This is something newly created and brand new and original, which means Christ took us from that world of abuse. He took us from that world where we were dominated by sin and the prince of the power of the air and the spirit that is energizing the children of disobedience. He quickened us together in Christ even when we were not looking at Him and really we couldn't even made the choice because we were necros, we were dead in sins. We didn't have a spiritual heartbeat, but God saw us and wanted us, chose us and quickened us. He quickened us. He gave us eyes to see that we needed to be saved. He gave us ears to hear the gospel. And the Holy Spirit went to work inside us. He quickened us together in Christ. And that's why Paul says, by grace are ye saved. And then God put forth all of his power and all of his brilliance and creative efforts to make us a poema, to turn us into a masterpiece. And because this word poema can describe a poem or a literary masterpiece, it means God changed the story in your life. It doesn't matter what was written about you before. The story changed because the great writer decided to give you a new ending. And he created you to be his workmanship or his masterpiece marvelously created in Christ Jesus. But if you think you had some abuse in your background, well, really to some degree, Everybody had something in their background to be ashamed of or some area where they felt like they were abused or treated wrongly. That's just what happens to people when they're not saved. But when Jesus lays his hands on us, he takes that which had fallen into a shambles and was desolate and makes it shiny and brand new. I'll be back in just a moment and I want to pray for you. Most people have been through rough times in life. And rough times can take a toll on relationships, health, finances, and so many other areas. If you feel you've suffered loss along the way in some area of your life, Jesus is in the restoration business, and He really can restore anything the devil or life has tried to ruin or take from you. In this amazing five-part series, you'll learn Jesus really can restore what the devil has tried to steal, kill, and destroy in your life. Jesus can restore you from abuse you have experienced. Jesus can even restore years you have lost. Jesus came to bring life back into all the areas where you feel you've been negatively affected and where you feel you've suffered loss. This series is designed to help you get back what the devil has tried to take away from you. And it's available in digital or physical formats, starting at just $10. We're also offering you a special bundle of Denise Renner's books, including You Know What Time It Is, Redeemed From Shame, the gift of forgiveness, and who stole Cinderella. People all over the world have testified about how God has used these books to liberate and set them free. And we believe they can make a big difference in your life or in the life of someone you love. This power-packed four-book bundle can be yours for just $34. Don't miss this special offer, the series You Are God's Restoration Project. 
and the special bundle of Denise's books. Call the number on your screen now or go to renner.org to order. Call or go online now. Friends, this is Rick Renner and I'm standing inside what's going to be the new studio in our TV studio in Moscow. You have given to make this happen. And right now, as you know, prices in Russia are just skyrocketing because of what's taking place in our part of the world. I want to say thank you to every one of you that have done something sacrificial to help us buy all the materials we need to finish the interior. We need to wrap this up as fast as we can. Proverbs 10, 21 says, the lips of the righteous feed many. And I want you to understand that from this spot, we're going to feed people all over the world the Word of God. And by being a partner with us and being a part of our giving team to wrap this up, every time the signal goes with the Word of God into people's private spaces all over this part of the world, God is going to credit you with part of the reward for what's going to happen because it's your seed. And I want to say thank you in advance for being a part of our giving team. I want to say thank you for letting me come into your space today. And I know that there is no possible way you can remember everything that I shared with you in today's program. But hey, you need to hear what I taught today again and again and again and really get it down deep inside you. Jesus put forth all the power necessary to deliver you from your past, all of that abuse to take you out of a shambles and out of desolate places to make you a masterpiece. <sighs> That's why I want you to have my brand new series called You Are God's Restoration Project. Jesus wants to lay his hands on you, recreate you, and make you shiny in every area of your life. And that's why the subtitle says, How God Restores the Desolate Places in Your Life. Please go online and order this right now or give us a call. And it comes with a study guide. And right now we're offering you a bundle of Denise's books. We're offering you her book, Who Stole Cinderella? The Art of Living Happily Ever After. I've read it four times. It is a great book. We're offering her book, The Gift of Forgiveness which is about what happens when you forgive yourself and receive forgiveness and give forgiveness to somebody else. Wow, it is powerful. Denise's book called Redeem from Shame, how you can be set free from shame and walk out of it forever. And her book called Do You Know What Time It Is? Which is about how you can redeem time. If you feel like you've lost time and opportunity, you can buy it back. You can redeem it. And that is what is in this book. Please let us know how to pray for you. Just give us a call or send us your email. But I want to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that we're not who we used to be. We have been changed. Lord, at one time we were a part of that gang, but now you've turned us into a masterpiece. Help us to embrace who you have made us to be in Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Remember Ecclesiastes 8.4 where the word of a king is, there is power, and I'll see you tomorrow. If you enjoyed this teaching, please subscribe, like, and comment so more people can see it.